As you can tell by the extremely vibrant colors of my shirt and my slightly sleepy demeanor, um, it's really hot. It's supposed to get into the 90s today, which, that's just the way it goes, but the fact is nobody has air conditioning out here, uh, least of all the buildings on campus, which means I can look forward to sweltering heat all day. So, to combat that, I'm going to make myself a nice cold frosty beverage. I believe that this is the beverage that Jean-Luc Picard would drink if he were on an away mission to some kind of hot climate. Now, we all know that normally he would order tea or Earl Grey hot, but if you're in a hot environment, you want something cold to drink to sort of quench that thirst, so I'm going to be making Arnold Palmer's. Step one, boil water. So the tea we're going to be using for this is organic Earl Grey tea, um, because it was the same price as the regular Earl Grey tea, so I figured, let's go organic. So for the amount that I'm making, which is about two liters, you usually want to use somewhere around five or six of your regular sized tea bags. Earl Grey tea is named after the second Earl Grey. Uh, so his particular claim to fame was the passage of the 1832 Reform Act, um, and that's all I could really find on him as far as big things that he did while he was Prime Minister. Another kind of interesting fact, uh, the reason that they spiked this with oil it is kind of a citrusy flavor. Um, one, it's supposed to mimic the more expensive varieties of Chinese tea, so this is actually kind of like the poor man's Chinese tea. And the other reason that, in particular, uh, the Earl Grey enjoyed this tea, um, it was specially blended for him in order to offset the high concentration of lime in the water near where he lived. Right, I've got my five tea bags. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and tie these in a knot so that they're easier to manage when they're inside of the pot, which is fun because it runs. See there, I've got my little loop. Boom. In preparation for it needing to be cold, I went ahead and I froze some lemonade. Because let's face it, if I'm having a nice delicious fruity Arnold Palmer, I don't want that ice to melt and it to get all diluted. No, I want the ice to melt and for it to get more lemonade. It became extremely popular. It used to be sort of their claim to fame when they were hosting people at their house that people would have Grey's tea. Uh, and it was so popular that they asked if there was a place that it could be purchased. And that's when the recipe was given to tea manufacturers and it has been in production ever since, which is why Jean-Luc Picard is able to enjoy it uh, at Starfleet in the future. So while we're waiting for that to finish boiling with Tug Lemonade, I have Santa Cruz Organic Lemonade because if you're going to be pretentious and drink organic tea, you may as well mix it with organic lemonade to get the full effect. Wait for it! Turn the stove off. Always turn the stove off. Don't burn your house down. It will make the entire beverage just lose all of its fun. All right, so we're gonna let this tea steep for a while. Depending on how you like your tea, uh, you can choose to let it steep for a longer amount of time, or if you don't like it as strong, you can let it steep for a shorter amount of time. Personally, I like my tea so strong that, you know, the spoon will stand up, as they say in the Britons. Okay, so the pour of an Arnold Palmer is probably the most important part because it sort of defines how the whole beverage is going to look. So the first thing we're going to do is get rid of some of this extra tea. And I have a more manageable amount in my measuring cup. So in the south, this beverage is called half and half, presumably because for whatever reason they don't like Arnold Palmer. Um, but also because, I mean, it's half lemonade, half tea. So we'll start off by pouring half a glass of your favorite lemonade. So the important part of the pour is if you pour too fast, it's going to just mix with the lemonade and then you won't get the beautiful separation that you expect from your fancy mixed beverage. So what you use is a spoon. So you put the spoon in the glass and it sort of acts as a barrier to slow down the tea as you pour it in. Now ideally you would use a ladle for this, but uh, April and I don't own a ladle. And there you have it. One delicious, exquisite Arnold Palmer, perfect for Captain Picard.
now that that's done, I am going to get back to writing my magazine article. I have to have a draft of it to do for class today, and I am not really very close to having it done at all. But that's fine. I'll get it done. It'll be fine. Everything's going to be fine. So, Alex, I will see you tomorrow, and, uh, and hopefully this weather will break, uh, so I won't just be dying of heat on Friday again, because otherwise I don't really know what I'm going to talk about other than it being too hot for life to survive any longer. Also, in future instances of this particular theme of a program, I'm going to call it, What do you think they would eat or drink in that place? And we can just discuss a famous character from a famous work and just discuss what they would eat or drink in a particular situation. So in the video I just did, what would Jean-Luc Picard drink if he were on a desert planet? Possibly a desert planet with a lot of golf courses. One more addendum, uh, if anybody's watching from home and has any other suggestions for things that people would eat and or drink in certain situations, uh, let me know in the comments. I'd be curious what you can come up with because I seriously just came up with that idea two seconds ago and I have nowhere else to go with it. So leave a comment below because uh, I want to know. I want to know what you think.